Hi future engineers, my name is Amy Serrato and I'm a geotechnical engineer at the University of Oklahoma. Geotechnical engineering is all about the study of what happens underneath the ground and how what happens underneath the ground affects what we build on the ground. And so I worry a lot about earthquakes and flooding and high wind events and try to figure out how to build structures that keep humans safer from those elements. When I was in high school, I had never heard of engineering. And I had a junior level teacher who encouraged me to do an internship with a National Park Service. And so between my junior and senior years, I went down to Kentucky Cumberland Gap and lived back country for six weeks. And we had to revegetate trails, find our own water sources. And my group leader said, Amy, I think you'd be a great engineer. That was the first time I'd ever heard the word engineer. And so from there on, I went to Lafayette College to study civil engineering. And when I got to civil engineering, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Structural, transportation, geotechnical, or environmental. And I had a, a female faculty member that taught my undergraduate soil mechanics class. And she was so phenomenal that I, I just was so interested in soil mechanics and foundation engineering that is when I decided that I was going to graduate school to make a career in playing with dirt. A typical day at the university is meeting with students, teaching some classes, working in the lab on some research, and coming out here to the field and doing full-scale testing, which helps to validate our numerical models. When I first came to the University of Oklahoma, I was fascinated that we had something called expansive soils. Back east, everything is saturated, which means it has a high water table, and the soil stays relatively the same. When you come to Oklahoma, we have very dry climate, and the soil expands when it rains, and it shrinks when it dries. And so I became fascinated with trying to build foundations that would keep houses from swelling and shrinking during these wet and dry cycles. And so in 2008, I won a presidential award, which is the highest award that they give young career faculty in the country. And I got to meet with President Obama at the White House. And that work from expansive soils really led into a love of trying to design in all different types of soils to keep everything that we build on those foundations more stable and have a longer design life. I believe some misconceptions are that you have to be excellent in math. I believe you have to be competent in math, but you have to want to solve problems in this industry and be creative. And so I try to tell young people that if you have a really creative mind and you like coming up with solutions that aren't already known, you can be an engineer. You always have the ability to use the math you've learned, but you don't, we don't do math and differential equations every day. Well, as you can imagine, soil is not a transparent medium. We can't look down and see into the ground. And so we have to do some kind of testing to figure out what's underneath the ground. And so a challenge becomes, because the soil is so different step by step, is trying to have a big visual picture of what an entire field looks like. And so the challenge is to go from a plan view to maybe a profile view and to connect the discrete borings together to create a picture of the soil that you're going to build on. And how I overcome that is using some computer programs that will take the spatial data and meld it all together to produce this nice picture where I can see where there might be some problem spots in the ground where I need to design a different type of foundation or do some other kind of ground remediation to make sure the building or the roadway doesn't settle or develop potholes or bumps as so when you're driving down the road you have a nice smooth travel. I believe internships in high school and in college 
really helped me focus and narrow down on what I wanted to do. In fact, I think an internship is a really good way to figure out what you don't want to do. And so I encourage people to go out and take that chance and take that internship and do that stint in a national park or volunteer somewhere where you think you could help using your skills and decide if that's really what you want to do. I believe in a growth mindset and I believe that we all have the ability to do whatever we'd like to do if we work hard enough at it. And so if you try something and you fail, you should try again until you succeed. Because I can always remember sitting down and trying to learn trigonometry and trying to learn AP calculus and having a hard time at first and thinking, oh, you know what, Amy, you're not good at math. But the fact of the matter was it was so new to me, I had to spend a lot of time learning. And once I spent a lot of time and, and put the time in, it became easier and easier. So if something's hard, don't be afraid to fail. In fact, you should fail often. And I think a measure of a person's success is not that they don't fail, is that they fail a lot, but then figure out how to succeed from all those failures. So I really like to work with problematic soils, and Oklahoma is one of the states that has probably the worst soils in the United States. Like I said, we have expansive soils that swell when it rains and shrink when it's dry. And so that puts a lot of pressure on whatever we build on it. And when I moved to Oklahoma, I noticed that there was lots of cracking in buildings and people couldn't close their windows and the doors wouldn't open and I wanted to try to solve that problem. And fast forward a few years, I became very interested in wind loading because Oklahoma is a very windy state. And so here we are at Berge Wind Power and this is one of my recent research projects and it's trying to help Berge come up with an alternative foundation system for their self-supporting lattice towers. Self-supporting lattice towers, as you can see here, have three legs that come down and they support a wind turbine that generates electricity for uh, whatever you need electricity for. And they're residential turbines and so we put them behind people's homes. And people like this type of self-supporting lattice tower because it's a small footprint and yet it creates a lot of electricity to put back into the grid. And so Berge asked me to come up with a foundation system that was had no concrete in it but would allow the wind load to get damped and get the maximum power out of their turbine. And so I used helical piles, which is a piling system that's a big soil screw that spins into the ground, and it's a very flexible pile that allows the tower to move without creating excessive movement at the turbine level. We also use these type of foundations in earthquakes to allow people to be safer and get out of their homes or off bridges before it collapses because that helical pile has a lot of damping characteristics that take the earthquake and lessen its effect as it moves up through the ground. And so my students and I have been working on this. We have we've instrumented three different piles. The piles are 13 and a half feet in the ground and as you can see the tower is up and I have a solar power data rig that is reading all of the data that's coming out of the ground. And last night we had a big windstorm, and you can look at the data and see where that wind came through, which is pretty exciting because not very many people have had the chance to instrument pile foundations underneath these towers. And so why I think this research is so exciting is because we can measure the dynamic loading of a wind tower, of a bridge system, of a gas compressor, and we can figure out how to keep these structures safe and producing whatever we've intended them to produce, whether it be wind power, whether it be um, collecting gas and gas refining or oil refining, or even um, keeping bridges from collapsing during earthquakes. And so if you come over here and look at these, we can see some of the um, instrumentation, which is covered by this plastic because of all the rain we've had. But we have accelerometers that measure the G-forces. And down underneath the ground, we have a lot of strain gauges, which allow us to see how those piles are bending under the wind load. And so we're hoping that towers like this 
and wind power like what Bergie is generating, can be brought into smaller communities in China and Africa and rural America where they can't get concrete because it's too far away from the batch plants. And they can spin these helical piles in, put these towers up, and generate wind power that can provide water to their village and electricity to their houses. And these piles and systems are great because if you need to take them down and move them, all you do is take the tower down and then take a machine out here and spin the pile out of the ground and you leave no trace that you were ever there, which I think is a, a great green alternative to a concrete foundation. Thank you for watching my profile. My name is Amy Serrato and I'm a geotechnical engineer. For more profiles, please visit yesscienceshow.com. Thank you.